Hello and welcome to part three of the volunteer training for the Amphibian Migrations and Road Crossings Project. This is Laura Heady. I'm the Conservation and Land Use Program Coordinator with the New York State DEC's Hudson River Estuary Program and Cornell University. In part three, I'm going to be talking about how to volunteer with the Amphibian Migrations and Road Crossings Project. So to begin, I'd like to just talk about the goals of the Amphibian Migrations and Road Crossings Project. So first, generally from an education perspective, we want to raise awareness about woodland pool and forest habitat, Hudson Valley biodiversity, and the importance of habitat connectivity. Second, by engaging volunteers, we're able to locate road crossings where migrations are happening reduce the mortality of migrating amphibians that are moving across roads, and by knowing where these locations are, we'll be able to identify opportunities to take conservation action to avoid or reduce mortality. Of course, we're trying to provide a rewarding volunteer experience. And finally, through the data that are collected, we can create a foundation for scientists to ask more questions. For example, how is climate change affecting the timing of migrations or what are the species distributions um, throughout the Hudson Valley? So what do volunteers do? Quite simply, the AM and RC volunteers are helping forest amphibians on their journey to woodland pools. More specifically, volunteers find and document road crossing locations in the Hudson Valley because we don't have a database of known crossings covering the entire watershed. But through the work of volunteers, we're starting to build a better understanding of those locations. But certainly there's so many roads in the Hudson Valley, the more that volunteers can get out and find these crossings, the better. We're trying to help reduce mortality at the road crossing sites by having volunteers carefully move amphibians across safely. And finally, volunteers record information about the weather, the traffic on the road that they're surveying, the species they see, and the counts of live and dead amphibians. And finally, they submit those observations to our program, the Hudson River Estuary Program. So what are the responsibilities of volunteers of the project? First, make sure you're signed up to receive program emails and then check your email during migration season. This is usually not a lot of email throughout the year. It's primarily going to be in March and April, with the exception of some emails that may come um, during other times of the year to offer educational opportunities or provide summaries of the migration season. Also locally, you're gonna wa want to watch your weather forecast to check on the conditions. And also before the season starts, you're gonna need to learn to identify Hudson Valley amphibians. And again, there's only about eight key species that you're gonna to wanna to know very well. And you'll have great resources available to you on the website and through the training videos to learn, uh, learn those amphibian identifications and also resources to bring with you while you're out on a migration night. Uh, also, uh, before going out and while you're on the road, you need to be safe and be prepared for the conditions. And I'm gonna talk a lot about this in the upcoming slides. Also be careful when handling amphibians so that you don't harm the amphibians. And finally, um, documenting your observations uh, on the data form while you're out in the field. And then when you get home, entering those uh, onto our online data entry system. So let's talk about some of these different responsibilities. So to prepare yourself, um, again, I suggested you sign up for our AMNRC emails. And you can do this on the project webpage. And if you go to the project webpage, you'll see embedded on the page. So this is different from the pop-up that uh, offers you to subscribe to all different kinds of DEC newsletters. This is very specific. So it's embedded in the webpage. It says DEC delivers, and it says sign up to receive amphibian migrations and road crossings alert alerts. So if you write in your email address there and hit submit, you'll be able to um, automatically be signed up to receive any alerts about the project and when migration conditions are imminent. And this is what 
one of those DEC Delivers emails will look like. So if you receive this, you'll know that you have signed up successfully. It will say Amphibian Migrations and Road Crossings as the title. And you can opt to get this as a digest or get each email singly, which I recommend you do because if you're wanting to get an alert about the migration conditions coming, there may only be a day or two notice, or I might be sending out an email the day of the potential migration. And if you receive this as a digest, you might not get it for days, um, days later. Also to prepare yourself, I encourage you to uh, read the volunteer handbook. You can download it and print it out for yourself if you'd like, um, or read it online. But as you can see from the table of contents, it's a short but comprehensive handbook um, covering everything from why the migrations happen, what our conservation concerns are, how to participate, what to bring, how to be safe, uh, how to find new amphibian crossings, uh, how to document the migration, and so forth. So the number one important step in preparing yourself for the migration is uh, making sure that you are safe and visible. I can't emphasize this enough to please take all necessary safety precautions, primarily wearing a reflective safety vest and bright lights so that you can be seen by cars because on dark rainy night, you don't expect to see people out on the road. So you really wanna be visible. You also want to prepare for cold and rainy weather. As I mentioned uh, in an earlier video, while we call them warm rainy nights, it's really not warm because the temperature is only around 40 degrees or maybe 41, 42, but it's usually quite chilly if you're standing out in the rain for a few hours. Um, so rain pants are a great idea, rain jacket, a hat with a brim is a good idea. Also bringing a friend along with you for the migration. Uh, is really, um, really helpful because they can help keep an eye out for traffic. They can help record information. You can take turns recording information, moving amphibians. Um, if you're looking for uh, a migration on the road, trying to find a new one, it's really helpful to have somebody driving and somebody else looking for uh, salamanders and frogs. Also, be sure to always stay alert. It's very easy to get very consumed by helping amphibians on the road, but it's very important to stay mindful of the fact you are on a road and cars could be coming. Also, please do not interfere with traffic or flag down any drivers. This is not your role as a volunteer in this project. Um, step aside, let cars go by. It can be heartbreaking if you have a lot of amphibians on, amphibians on the road, um, but, if you find a crossing that has a lot of activity and a lot of mortality, you can document that and certainly take steps with your town or your city or your village to maybe look into a temporary road closure to avoid that in the future. But it's not your role as a volunteer to be directing traffic. And it's not uncommon to have people stop to make sure that you're okay, especially if you have your hazards on flashing on your car. So I suggest that you bring some of the project fact sheets with you in your car so that you can hand them out if somebody comes by and is curious about what you're doing. I've done this many times myself and it's a nice way to also educate people about what's happening. If you're considering bring, bringing children um, on a migration, it's really important to take an honest uh, look at um, whether or not it's a good idea. And so some considerations and questions to ask yourself, are the children good at following directions? Do they know how to be safe on a road around traffic? Will they know how to be gentle with amphibians? Is the road site family friendly? And will you have one adult for every child? And if you answer no to any of these questions, I think it's best to wait until they're older. Also to prepare yourself, I had suggested that you review amphibian identification guidance. And so as I mentioned, we have lots of resources on the website. So where the red arrow is on the right of the slide, you'll see there's a list of different links, many of which have resources for learning about um, uh, salamanders and frogs. The top, um, near the top where the arrow is, there's the amphibian identification guide. And if you click on that, it'll take you to a different page 
And that's our amphibian identification guide page. You can scroll down and you can see um, the, the most common species that have been observed during migrations on this page. Or if you'd like, you can download a printable version of the identification guide. That guide looks like this. These are two of the four pages and we recommend volunteers print them out and laminate them and they make a really handy guide to have out in the field. They're waterproof and you also can use the laminated sheets to help you move amphibians across the road. Um, lots of our volunteers have found that's been handy. There's also a ruler um, along the bottom so you can use that to estimate size if you're trying to use that to identify a species. Um, and if you participate in our trainings, we offer laminated copies of the identification guide to all of our training participants. Okay, so reviewing again what to bring. Let's emphasize again the importance of looking um, or rather being seen and being safe. So a reflective vest, you can see in the photo on the right what a difference it makes having people out with reflective vests on a dark road. Also um, lanterns and flashlights and headlamps. So headlamps are really helpful for filling out the data form. They're helpful for being visible on the road. They're not necessarily helpful for finding amphibians because they're often not bright enough. So it's encouraged that you bring a very bright flashlight or a lantern that can illuminate the road so that you're not accidentally stepping on amphibians and so that you really can see you know, what's on the road. Uh, blinking lights like the kind they sell for um, bikers to put on their um, backpacks or um, you know, on their clothing so they can be seen by cars at night. You also can maybe clip those on um, if you'd like to your clothing for extra visibility. And I always recommend bringing some extra batteries in the car just in case any of your lights are not working. Again, rain gear, warm layers so that you're comfortable outside in the kind of damp cold. Uh, always make sure you bring copies of the data form, so maybe some scrap paper, a clipboard, and pencils. Again, uh, laminated identification sheets are very handy to have with you. The project fact sheet for handing out to any um, curious passersby. And also, um, in some locations where the migration activity is very high, it's helpful to have a clean container or some kind of scoop that you can actually put multiple amphibians in at once to carry them across the road. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about the importance of the uh, cleanliness. You know, again, think about these amphibians as having very sensitive skin. So anything that comes into contact should just be rainwater or, you know, water, nothing that has any residue or chemicals or anything like that. Sadly, uh, one item that is sometimes useful is a spatula for cleaning up um, some of the dead animals that are already um, squished on the road. And that way you won't count them twice if you clean them off the road. So you can mark them on your data form and then take them off the road with the spatula. And then a camera or some way to take photos that's protected uh, from the rain. We really want to encourage volunteers, especially if you're new and you're just learning the species identification, to at least take a photo of each species that you think you've observed so we can help you verify that you're identifying things correctly. Also, uh, we like photos of volunteers that are dressed appropriately for safety, like the folks in this photo here. Um, we always like seeing pictures of volunteers in action. And also great images of amphibians. Um, I'll often use volunteer photos in some of our publications and the email alerts. So photos are always welcome. So if you're heading out for a migration and you don't know where to go, um, there is a separate training module that gets into some more detail on this, but there's a few just general recommendations. You can check existing maps, aerial photos, and local um, reports and inventories for your community. Uh, some communities actually have better detailed wetland maps than others. Um, this air photo on the right, I've circled an area that shows where there are woodland pools. Those dark areas indicate wet, you know, wetlands um, that look pretty open in the middle of the forest. And the fact that there's forest on both sides of the road would make me suspect this might be a good spot to look um, for amphibians potentially crossing to get from the forest to, to that woodland pool on the north side of the road. So looking for these kinds of signatures 
on an air photo is one way to help you um, find potential crossings. But really, if you know where there's large forested areas that might have wetlands, those are often good places to look too, because sometimes deeper in the forest, there, there may actually be woodland pools as well. You also can ask around if any of your neighbors or friends have observed migration activity. I find that when I talk about this project, it usually um, elicits a response from somebody that says, oh, I've seen that, you know, and, and so if you talk to people about this, they may be able to recollect locations where they've seen lots of amphibians moving. And then you can very carefully conduct what we call windshield surveys. So if you have areas that you suspect could be likely places, you can bring a friend in the car, drive slowly, um, and you know, patrol these roads looking to see if there's any kind of concentrated areas of amphibian crossings. And one tip for that is to drive with the windows down a little bit. I know if it's raining, that's hard. But if you can um, be able to hear, if you hear wood frogs calling, uh, that's a good sign that you have a woodland pool nearby. So that's a good habitat indicator. And um, it might be a good place to look more closely on the roads. Okay, so let's say you've located a crossing. Next step is to collect data and assist amphibians. So if you found a place where there's activity, you're gonna to wanna to park in a safe place away from the amphibian crossing because you don't wanna accidentally run over any amphibians with your car. Also be respectful of private property and try to avoid parking right in front of people's homes. Um, they're gonna be a little bit suspicious if people are out parking in front of their house at night. Um, once you get out of the car, keep an eye underfoot. Um, make sure that you get your light on right away and start scanning the road so that, again, you don't accidentally step on anything. And if it's possible, uh, keep your feet on the street as opposed to the grassy edges of the street where you might not be able to see frogs or salamanders. Of course, if it's unsafe to be on the street, move to the side. And now that you have located a crossing, you should right away start filling out your data form. Um, you know, in, there's some kind of key sections. Right off the bat, you'll wanna put in the date, the time you started observing, and the temperature when you started observing. At the end of the night, you'll fill in when you've stopped observing and the temperature when you stopped. Also, um, you'll answer some questions about weather conditions and also um, a general count of cars in a 20 minute period to give us a sense if you had light, medium, or heavy traffic. You'll fill out some location information about the crossing and also information about yourself and the volunteers in your group if you have any. Uh, we really like to stay in touch with everyone and we also like to follow up. Um, in the past, we've sent small tokens of our thanks for volunteer participation. And unless we get the contact information for everybody in your group, we can't do that. So it's really great to be thorough with giving us uh, contact info. And then on the back page is where you fill out the amphibians that you've observed. We've listed the main um, species that are most commonly seen, but there's blank spaces for you to fill in anything else that you may observe. Um, and you're, there's columns for how many live and how many dead. And then at the bottom, you'll fill in just a few more questions about the general direction all the amphibians were moving, how many you actually helped cross uh, the road, and then any additional comments you want to add. So once um, you've got you know, yourself dressed for safety, you've got your data form ready to fill out, and you're scanning the road and you find an amphibian, that's when you have a chance to start assisting the amphibians. So you want to make sure your hands are clean moist and free of all chemicals before handling live amphibians. And when I say like clean of, uh, free of chemicals, I mean no insect repellent, no moisturizer, no hand sanitizer. Really, you just want your hands to be clean and get them nice and wet from the rainwater. Um, they're very sensitive and we, we don't wanna harm them while we're trying to help them. If you find a live amphibian, you wanna gently pick it up and move it in the direction it was heading. Um, don't lift it by its tail. Um, you know, try to have a um, gentle but firm um, hold on it so that it can't uh, drop out of your hand or hop out of your hand. Uh, if it's dead, you can use uh, the spatula or some kind of scoop to remove it from the road after you've noted it on your data form. And again, record all the species that you're seeing and the numbers on the data form, and you can photograph um, 
each species as one kind of representation of each species that you saw. In terms of how long you're going to collect data and assist amphibians, that's entirely up to you. We appreciate any time you're willing to offer. And of course, as the night where, you know, continues, uh, traffic does start to get lighter later in the night. Um, and so usually, uh, you know, a lot of volunteers might go out when it first gets dark and they may stay just for a couple of hours, depending on the activity levels and, and their uh, endurance for staying out in the cold and the rain. But when you do finish up, be sure to record the time and the temperature when you ended your survey. And then, you know, when you leave, again, continue to use caution when driving away from the site and on your way home, because there is a chance that there will still be lots of frogs hopping on the roads and salamanders slithering along. All right, well, you've wrapped up your home. You're getting warm, maybe you made yourself a cup of hot tea, and now is a good chance to submit your data. This is um, something we're really encouraging everybody to do is send in your data the night that you collected it because it's fresh in your mind. You can check over what you wrote down while you're outside and you can enter it into our um, online um, interactive data entry form. And so really there are two options. If you don't have access to a computer or you're uncomfortable using online uh, computer forms, that's fine. Uh, you could just rewrite your observations very neatly on a new clean data form. You'll have to create a map and there's directions on how to do that in the handbook. And then you'll have to email us a scanned copy or you can submit the data online. And, and there's a simple form and there's a map where you'll be able to uh, indicate right where you were on the map. And that immediately generates um, coordinates for us. So it makes it very easy. Um, and I also wanted to encourage everybody to even submit your data when you don't see any amphibians. Because if you go out on a very good condition night and you monitor a road in the forest, but you see nothing, that's still helpful for us to know. So um, don't, you know, you may be disappointed, but your, your data will still be valuable. So please do uh, share uh, your data form, you know, get online, enter that all in, even if you didn't see any live or dead amphibians. And here's just a look at what the online data entry looks like with what we call Survey123, which is the, um, the platform we're using. And the link on how to, or the link to access this is on the project website along with um, a set of directions that are very detailed. But generally the survey mimics the data form. There's different categories for date and time, weather conditions, the crossing location, amphibian information, et cetera. And, uh, the image on the right gives you a sense of what that looks like. Um, and like I said, there's a map where you can just put in a point to show right where you were during the crossing. So to wrap up, let's review. So why are the amphibians crossing the road? Hopefully you're answering this question, but just to help you out. So they're crossing the road because they're moving from their overwintering habitat in the forest to the woodland pools where they need to breed and their habitat has probably been fragmented by the road that you're on. And so if you see them crossing a road, it's that's what we call habitat fragmentation. And so we're basically trying to mitigate the effects of that fragmentation by helping move them safely. When do the migrations happen? They happen after the ground has thawed, when the evening temperatures are staying above 40 degrees and it's raining or it's very wet out after a rainy day. And how do you keep safe during a migration? A reflective safety vest, number one. Headlamp to help you be seen and also so you can see your data form. A, a big bright flashlight so you can see what's underground or underfoot rather on the ground. Um, bringing a buddy with you. Those are just some of, the, um, some of the ways you can stay safe, but I can't emphasize again enough that reflective safety vest. All right, well, thank you so much. That concludes this module on how to participate um, and volunteer with the Amphibian Migration and Road Crossings Project. The next module, we'll just take a look at how to find potential crossings if you don't actually know where to go to look for a migration. So thanks again for uh, listening and, um, and hopefully uh, you'll listen to the next session.